All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Rational Investor .co. My name is Brian Beamish, the Rational Investor here with your Bitcoin summary for uh, where are we here? August 30th, Saturday. Well, so much for that summer. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, Labor Day weekend is here, and uh, once we get on the other side of Labor Day weekend, uh, the pros come back from the Hamptons, and as we cease to say in stockbroker land, and uh, we get back to business. Of course, we all should be well aware that uh, September historically is the worst performing trading month. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see how uh, Bitcoin acts through September. We may find, uh, you know, and there are others that have debated this with me. It's really interesting to watch. Uh, as I sort of go through these videos, uh, I'll hit hot buttons with people, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody will come yammering out, oh, you can't say that, you can't say that, oh, oh. and it's like, wow, where did that come from? But anyway, um, we'll be interested to see. I personally think that there is sort of like a, um, if growth is perceived to be toast and people are getting fearful, you might find that uh, Bitcoin actually gets a bit of a rally. So, you know, we'll see how uh, she acts through September and how our correlation between sort of uh, the commodity or hard asset proxy that I think Bitcoin is and also uh, maybe a bit of a fear proxy too. But anyway, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, this is our free YouTube video. You know, I'll try and keep this about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we're just going to take a quick uh, daily look at BTCE, uh, BTC Phoenix, uh, BTC OK Coin, and we'll finish up with uh, the daily uh, BTC. Well, actually, no, it isn't BTC, is it, silly? Uh, Litecoin uh, dollar, just because uh, there are some people that are trading it. So uh, let's get to work. First things first, you know, and uh, we try and keep this message very consistent, very clear. You know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. These are time-tested strategies used by uh, fund managers uh, for quite some time. And really, ideally, what I want to do is I just want to highlight the nice slam dunk trades for you. And right now, we have no slam dunk trades whatsoever working. Uh, a lot of really, really sort of iffy stuff here. So, uh, big breakout, you know, uh, from previous, uh, you know, uh, for members, we took a look at the weekly chart and we talked a bit about how, you know, here is your slam dunk trades, you know, nice weekly turn here, bang, 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 away you go, beautiful weekly bottom here, uh, and the end result of a, a longer or a higher time frame breakout is you get these, you know, monstrous bull runs. <coughs> so... That's basically what we had here coming out of that event. Huge run up, thousand bucks and change, and then we had to take some time and clean the market up. And that's basically what's happened here now over the, I guess you could say, the better part of uh, nine months, eh? We're almost into September here. Um, and, you know, natural levels for institutions to consider buying anywhere between the 78.6 and 61.8, which on this BTC happened to be 293 up to 465. And really, you know, I don't have a problem if you're just like Joe Sixpack and you just want to accumulate Bitcoins and really, you know, you'll risk, say, 50% on the ownership of the coin. And of course, that follows Cry's number rule number two of investing, uh, and you're not breaking that rule. And if you want to learn about that rule, then I would suggest you uh, maybe consider taking our course. But anyway, um, I really don't have a problem with moms and pops who want to risk some money. You know, anytime it gets down into sort of this $300 area, eh, maybe look at going buy some. You know, it's worked quite well. Boom, worked, worked, worked maybe worked I don't know tough to say you know and the great part about buying like 300 some odd dollars is that it doesn't take a huge rally for you to get to your double point right I mean this low was three hundred nine dollars and of course this is a real mess and it's got me all stressed because I'm not quite sure how to handle it lately um, but you can see the counter trend rally was back to 530. One, two, three days later. I mean, that's nuts. Total speculative asset right now. Um, 
ideally we'd like to see this resolve bullishly out of this but there's no reason why we can't come back down into the soup here this is one hell of a trading range can you imagine if the Dow was sitting one day at 11,000 and the previous day it was sitting at uh, 5,000 I mean God people couldn't handle that uh, it's a bit nuts so but you know that's what you're getting involved with with trading this uh, cryptocurrency and unfortunately, you know, as a broker kind of guy that's worked in the stock market for years and years and years, I always think of risk first, right? I always want to make sure that I live to fight another day. And so as a result, when you get into this sort of face melt down kind of environment, the best thing to live to fight another day is don't touch it. Because, you know, this kind of uh, occurrence right in here basically is a career ruiner. Could be that one day you could literally rack up a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars in debt if you uh, if you caught the market going the wrong way. If you shorted, you know, foolishly down here, then oh, you'd be dying a thousand deaths. And of course, you know, there there were lots of people calling bottoms all the way along here. So if you called a bottom and you went margin long, you'd just get crushed here, right? And that's kind of exactly what these unregulated exchanges are doing. You know, they're, they're, they're basically just running weak hands. So with all that said, you know, I, you know we saw this uh, rally last spring, right? Sort of V-bottom rally out of the lows. I think we're seeing the same sort of thing. And you'll notice if we just do a quick fib here, uh, this low up to this high. All right, uh, let's go. You can see OTE, right? 61.8 to 78.6, and look at that. Came right down into it. And it took a long time, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You know, so about a, probably about a month and a half, two months of trading action to come back down into the OTE here. So on uh, BTCE, the similar OTE is down here at 374, right? Long, long, long way down. And uh, here's our rally peak. So, uh, you know, th what did I say there? 30 days, 25 days, somewhere in there. So, one, two, three, four, five. We're five days in, basically the next month. All right. Uh, if if we just follow a similar pattern like this, right? It's fairly nice and healthy. Just down, up, down, you know, down, up, down. Um, I'm not saying that that's going to happen because, frankly, nobody knows what's going to happen. But statistically speaking, you notice how on uh, BTCE we ran into the 13-period moving average. Right, that's a fantastic little tool to just give you short-term uh, support and resistance. Right, so here we are at the 13, and basically it's a brick wall. Uh, there's 61.8, Mr. Mountain Man's trade just missed it by a hair. Um, and like I said, you know, retracement's heading back down. Now they're starting, you know, 38.2 jumping out here at me at 445. Uh, and then there's the OTE way down there. All right, so, and then, you know, if we finish off just this little uh, snapshot with what the internals are saying, um, you know, I'm not getting any real signal here on volume. We have a V bottom, so at best, maybe we're going to come down and test these lows and then turn higher. You know, maybe it has to look something like this over here. <coughs> Excuse me. It might look like this nonsense. Um, long and short of it here is, is this a W? Is this a V? You know, clearly that's a V, not a W yet. Uh, momentum. We've been talking about momentum coiling really nicely here over the past little while. You know, you can see momentum did coil into this event, right? And then when it broke that, that's when all hell broke loose. Uh, so we have a new low to work with. It is higher than this low. So if we can somehow put a bottom in and turn this momentum back up through this blue line here, then you will have a confirmed momentum divergence. But it's, we're still a long, long way away from that event. Willie, you can see Willie's just slowly taken, what's this, this is June, we got into stupid here, the end of May, beginning of June, and basically we've just taken the summer to slowly bring Willie back down to earth. 
and we rally back to the 50 line. It'll be interesting to see how he acts here. We may have to have one more washout, right? Because we really want to get Willie, the moving average, down into this stupid zone for us to really believe that, that a bottom is close. So no real signal there. All right, so that's your BTC summary. Not really a hell of a lot to talk about. Basically, you know, with this crazy ass price down to 309, as I've drawn these sort of red lines, this is your trading range right now. We've got a whole bunch of resistance up here around this 550 to 600 area. And support, uh, I would have to say for now, and it's not a hell of a lot of support, is this 309 low. Um, and really, I think, you know, investors have to wait for a resolution of this. And I, you know, we had talked briefly in the past about how maybe, you know, we had a potential inverted head and shoulders forming before, but we took to new lows here on the 309, so maybe we have a new inverted head and shoulders, and which would imply a right-hand shoulder way over here, this tag right around this, uh, basically the OTE level again, right? So. All right, that's your BTC summary. Now, uh, Phoenix looks a little better, thank heavens. Phew. You can see how Phoenix is really trying to bottom in this OTE zone. All right. So we'll have to see how it acts, and you can also see a momentum-wise, you know, there's that bear momentum divergence we've been talking about for quite a while. You can see how we're really, you know, coiling up here. And so that blue line that we talked about on BTCE, uh, that's it there, right? So if we can get this market back up here, then rock and roll. You know, we got something to work with. We got a bullish momentum divergence. We haven't talked about that in quite a while. Uh, same thing as BTC. Willie really not giving us much here. Right? We're just sitting sort of middle of the road. Momentum's not really exciting one way or the other. Um, the on balance volume, you can see we bottom through here, we top through here, we've come down, made a V bottom. Interesting, these real big volume like uh, bars here. That might be indicating a bit of a reversal. So we'll see how this resolves. We might come out of this. V bottom again, not really the most uh, attractive of bottoms. <coughs> Uh, then we'll zoom in on just uh, from these lows, right? And the good part about, you know, because Phoenix here uh, doesn't have this, you know, face rip low, at least the range is a little bit more discernible. Um, interesting here, you know, again, 13 EMA on the dailies, 38.2 uh, leads me to believe that that's a pretty significant resistance point get back up through that high and we got something to work with. If we break down through this low here, you can see we have a bit of a consolidation range. Uh, right. Uh, here's that 13 EMA, here's the 38.2, we rallied up, backed off, then rallied up and tested those highs. So if we come down and we trade below this low, then that means that this little dead cat bounce is over and we're going to start heading back down, right? And that'll be a new M, right? Voot, 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 bush. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, so we don't have to start pulling our hair out just yet. 491.52 is the magic number there. And, uh, you know, we won't spend a lot of time on it, but, you know, when we looked at the bot setups, you know, we had this as a stop here, this four nine, uh, you know, that's the uh, BTCE, where's the uh, Phoenix? Uh, that's BTC again, here's Phoenix. Uh, so 491.52 is the bot stop, long 515, your target 585, way up there, right? So that bot is still working away. Uh, it's interesting when we were talking, and I guess that's sort of your, uh, this is a smaller bull ABCD that's also painting up in there. If we look at like the one hour, we probably see that. Uh, but I don't want to get too much into that with you guys. Okay, so uh, just finishing this off, Phoenix. Um, you know, and you know, I sort of talked about this on um, on the uh, you know weekly summaries and all those kind of things. Um, this has a massive bearish market structure working here, no doubt about it, right? And as long as we keep making lower highs and lower lows, you know, the bearishness is just confirmed. Um, 
I mean, bless your heart, if you can, and there are traders out there that can do it, don't get me wrong, they're you know, very, very profitable. I've, you know, I've talked to you guys at length about Mr. Mountain Man, he's very good at it. Uh, but, you know, there are people that can literally buy bottoms like this, you know, like if this was, uh, you know, six, in fact, this is Mr. Mountain Man's trade, isn't it, right? It's 471.79 to buy that low and then have the discipline just to hold on and maybe look to sell some up top here. Uh, this it's a tough trade. Don't get me wrong. It's a tough business to try and buy uh, V bottoms, right? They call it uh, trying to buy a or what is it? Catch a falling knife. I personally am a big fan of the market structure idea using M's and W's. It makes life a little easier. So just going forward here on Phoenix, you have pretty easy numbers to remember. 534.89 is your top of your range right now, and. 491.52 is the bottom, and you day, you know, like you uh, day uh, time frame chart players, especially YouTubers, you know, there's probably pretty good levels to work with, you know. Um, all right, moving right along to OK Coin. Interesting to see OK, and this is uh, this I think has become sort of the sexy market du jour because their commissions are so low. In fact, I think they're zero right now. And if they had a PAM service, I think I might be inclined to go over there. But interesting, uh, this same range, there's the uh, four-hour low that we talked about coming out of the spring, right? Beautiful bottom there. Uh, double bottom within double bottom, yada, 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 right? Um, that just so happens to be our OTE zone. Right, and look how price came right down into the zone. You know, we could mentally or manually put on the sweet spot, 70.5 right there, somewhere right around there. Look how it just tagged right off of that and then reversed. So, okay, coin looks okay. And like I said, I mean, maybe if we're lucky, maybe it's just BTCE and the Slo Slovenian, whatever, the Russian mob, all that kind of crap. They're just fucking around with that market. Maybe. Let's hope that's the case. Um, and, you know, Phoenix, um, what the heck is its chart? That was here. Phoenix, right? It's got a half decent bottom trying to form here at the daily OTE level, all right? Okay, Coins got a half decent bottom trying to form at the daily OTE level. So keep our fingers crossed. Maybe we can come out of this uh, not looking so bad. If you if you believe the BTCE people, uh, we got trouble. If you believe <gasps> Phoenix and OKCoin, eh, we're still constructive. You know, it's not so bad. Um, and, you know, if this is an OTE on the downside, let's take a look at some objectives on the upside. And if we just think that this is a trading range, then we just simply take the trading range and throw some OTE levels on it. And let's see what we got. All right. So not a big surprise. We see, you know, first things first. And God, it's incredible how often this happens. Uh, where's this fib? It's frustrating when you have so many drawing tools. Oh, fudge. Well, I can't spend a lot of time on it. I have another class coming up here pretty soon. So, um, uh, zip, zip, zip. Come on, you piece of crap. <clears throat> okay, so first things. No, that's not right. <laughs> Uh, you're so frustrating. Where's the? Now, how on earth did it draw like that? That makes no sense at all. All right, so there. Uh, we're going here, right? Here, up to here. Yeah, what a mess. All right, so uh, point of the matter here. First stop target, 38.2. Look at that counter trend rally. Bang! Right up against it. Just literally stopped on a dime. Right, this is a daily chart, and then since then, you know, what have we done? Uh, basically, just a whole bunch of sideways. Eh? So, you know, like we said, there's the daily 38.2, completely natural. And again, these aren't exact numbers. I'm just, you know, eyeballing them here. Um, rally up, 
then back off. You know, and the irony of it all is, you know, if you do fibs going the other direction, I bet you it's 38.2. Yeah, that's what this is, right? So this level here, from here to here, 38.2 is right there. So 38.2 on the upside, 38.2 on the downside, right? So we're just sort of consolidating. And you could really argue, you know, just simply put, this is a nice little, it's a potential flagpole, which looks good. We kind of saw this on Litecoin yesterday, but it crapped out. Litecoin crapped out and couldn't do it. But anyway, um, basically, this is like a pennant, you know? So uh, flagpole, pennant, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I know there's a lot of difference. Everybody's going to get all pissed off that I just said that. But anyway, so flagpole goes basically from the low up to the top of the, the highest high, right? And then you have your consolidation range, boom, boom. And then theoretically, two-thirds of the apex is where the breakout should occur. And if it's bullish, it's basically projecting a target right up into there. And what a coincidence, there's Mr. Mountain Man's number, 61.8. See how this crap all lines up after a while? It's incredible. So there's your OTE short up there. And like I said, the little uh, pennant flag is uh, basically suggesting if we resolve bullishly out of this, then that's probably where we're heading. All right, let's finish off today just with a quick Litecoin chart. <clears throat> now, um, you know, I think the point that you have to make about Litecoin was we did have this big 200% extension target hit. And that just happened here recently, right? So bang, bang, right on the nose. Uh, if we do our fibs off of this high, look at the rally right to 38.2. Basically, just the same thing as the OK coin. We've got a little bit of a um, little bit of a flag type pattern happening here, right? Uh, flag pull. This is, I suppose, a pennant on a flag pull, right? So the flag pull is from there to there. And basically, uh, that's going to be your distance on a uh, resolution of the range. So, oh, you cocksucker. No, oh, just have to eyeball it. Hopefully, that's close. All right. So, if we break out bullishly, then there's there. Boom, 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 up into OTE. Now, the problem for Litecoin, right, is we had a really sweet little setup developing yesterday. Uh, and then it crapped out and it put in a new, uh, a new double top. So... So a little disappointed to see Litecoin fail. You can see how we had this little cup and handle formation right here. And um, maybe it was off the one hour. I'll just sort of finish with this. Uh, the low here at 469 actually set up a bot trade, right? There's the bot entry level. You can't see it. It's at uh, 530 area. And what was really interesting was a student and I were sitting in a tutorial, and you notice that, you know, there's the bot entry level there. Uh, you notice the market came down, right, tested these lows, you know, really hard, rallied back up, came back, rallied back up, and then was just sitting there. And we had started a tutorial, Marcel and I. And uh, he had sort of a short bias, and I, I was even tweeting, and I was like, uh, you know, if Litecoin breaks out through the top here, this is a beautiful cup and handle, right? Cup and handle looks like this. It goes, right? It's a little coffee cup. Right? You see it? Um, and I was tweeting, and I even said, you know, watch out, watch out, watch out. And it's interesting. We went up, and then we crapped out. And, right? and this is an hourly chart, so this is over a two-hour period. And then we broke down. And basically, Marcel and I were just talking, and we just simply said, you know, it's just a fairly simple strategy. Clearly, the market had defined a trading range, right, from these highs and these lows. And it was really interesting was this bar. We came right down to that low. So literally, a break of this trading range was a, was basically a trade setup. And so uh, he shorted on a break here. He had enough. He has enough money. He has enough size to basically take the trade. And we calculated. I think a profit target we said was like 513, 514, somewhere in there. And look at this son of a bitch. It bottomed here at uh, 5, 512. So and I was squawking. I don't know whether you, anybody was in the live room this morning here, but uh, man, I was uh, pounding the table. Where uh, where is he? Uh, earlier this morning, I was like, uh, yeah, I sure hope you took some profits, damn it. <laughs> uh, where are we here? 
What's in those people? Where are you? Where are you, Marcel? Marcel, 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 Marcel. Anyway, so, and uh, members, you can go into the crypto live room, and basically, I'm on here. We've uh, set up this uh, RI School for Bitcoin Trader Development. It is a chat room at TradingView, and it's specifically for you guys. And basically, I just park myself in here, and anybody who has any questions whatsoever, you know, feel free to uh, either chat with me, or you can see we have other uh, members on here all the time. So it's a nice, handy little way to uh, talk to me. But anyway, so the point of the matter is Marcel did uh, take the trade, or I, I don't know whether I have permission to say his name, but I have. Sorry, Marcel, if you don't, didn't want people to know. Uh, he took this short. I sure hope he took some profits, because you can see this is a nice range trade setup. And uh, we hit a pretty uh, interesting uh, profit objective here down here. But anyway, so going forward on the Litecoin, uh, you know, kind of with the Bitcoin, it's all really the same thing. I see consolidation y. Uh, Litecoin, unfortunately, is just keeps making lower highs and lower lows, so it's very painful right now. Hopefully, we can turn the corner and start making higher highs and higher lows. And if this bought, does play out the way I think, you know, our target, we could realistically look for $7. And what's interesting about this $7, $8 area is that this is where the institutions would consider shorting Litecoin again in earnest, right? The OTE. So, all right. Um, I hope that was of help to you. I mean, it's a Labor Day weekend. It's really messy market. I don't see any major, you know, breakout trends. Ironically enough, I think if you are going to be trading the market on an hourly, daily basis, I kind of think that you should be concentrating on this OK coin. And if this OK coin uh, has a PAM service, I think I'd seriously consider moving over there, but just because the commissions are zero. You know, I did this trade for the PAM service the other day, and it actually kind of, you know, it kind of pissed me off because. When I was trading commodities, uh, you know, our total commissions would be like, um, you know, two dollars fifty cents round turn, or you know, uh, yeah, two dollars fifty cents round. Uh, well, let's say five dollars, five dollars round turn, right? Um, on a one hundred thousand dollar commodity contract. Oh, what's going on with BTC here? Didn't hit. Um, on this SOB, this silly PAM service, here was my transaction, here was my exit, five bucks, and basically I was scratch. And that's kind of like an insult. So what, are you just working for the brokers? You know? uh, and there aren't even any brokers here. It's all these stupid unregulated exchanges. I mean, the sad part about it for the BTC community, this Bitcoin community, is you guys just don't understand that you guys are getting raped here on commissions. And and you don't even realize it. And what I find hilarious is this is supposed to be the great liberation and power to the people and all this, and yet the industry is just fucking you right, left, and center. So go figure. <laughs> Makes no sense at all. But, you know, I mean, that doesn't surprise me. Typical market. Um, so anyway, the point of the matter here, OKCoin okay has uh, zero commissions, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it was just they did this in sort of a way to try and capture market share. Um, so if we do happen to hear news about, you know, PAM services being offered on OKCoin, okay I'd be more than happy to move over there. Uh, but anyway, so that's my two cents. Um, as it stands right now, a little insulted that these commissions are so high and they represent such a margin. I mean, you think about it, just to break even on a Bitcoin investment, you have to see a 1% return. Right? That's, that's kind of a bit insulting for investors. But anyway, I won't, I won't touch on that anymore. For the time being, you know, these are lower time frame charts. So you guys really aren't too concerned with that. Off of the dailies, uh, we're not trending higher. I don't think there's a big hurry for you to, you know, to go and, you know, bet the farm here on a long position. I think basically middle of the road kind of risk. And as I have sort of outlined before, what I really want to do for you guys is, uh, is I highlight these really low volatility setups and what I would consider relatively high potential uh, reward. We're not in that kind of scenario right now, so it's just sort of a big hurry up and do nothing. Go and enjoy your Labor Day and have yourselves an awesome weekend. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Everybody have yourselves a great day. All the best. Uh, don't be a stranger. Love to see you over at the site. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to give me a holler. 
we'll talk to you all real soon.